Uh, hello, this will be a demonstration of Proposition 20 from Book 3 of Euclid's Elements, which states that in a circle, the angle at the center equals double the angle at the circumference when the angles have the same arc as their base. What this would look like is we have some circle A, B, C, D. Okay. We have B, C, we have this arc right there. We have point A such that this, so this is an unenunciated difference between uh, the points A and D. Um, oh, we have the center E, of course. So the difference we have between the points A and D and why this proposition is actually two parts, despite the enunciation not looking like it needs multiple parts, is that the line connecting A and E, if produced, hits the arc BC, whereas we cannot say the same for the straight line DE, right? If we produce this, it does not land on the arc BC. And because of that difference, the um, proofs are slightly different, so that's why Euclid has to do this twice over, because there's two cases of the angle which uh, stands on this arc on the circumference, like so. Uh, we are given then the angle BEC, which is our angle at the center, right? So it's so the angle BEC, the inflection point, the vertex, let's say, is this point E. Uh, we also have the angle BAC at the circumference. So the, at the circumference versus at the center, pretty obvious difference. And we also have the angle DBC, like so. And what we have set out to prove is that this angle BEC is double the angle BAC and is also double the angle BDC. First thing we're going to tackle is the first part of this proof, which is tackling um, the angle BEC being double the angle BAC. How we do this is we connect the straight line AE by postulate one, and then we produce this straight line down to point F, point F being where the straight line AE uh, intersects the arc BC. An arc, I, I think I've used this word in previous videos, an arc is simply a portion of the circumference. So arc BC is a thing, arc AB is a thing, arc AD is a thing. Just uh, segments of the circumference, we can say. That's what an arc is. Okay. Now we know that EA is equal to EB. They're both radii of the same circle. And so definition 115 tells us that they must be equal. And because these two sides of the triangle EBA are equal to each other, we know that the angles which they subtend must also be equal. That's proposition 15. So that we can say that the angle ABC is equal to the angle EBA. I might have said the angle EAC. The angle EAB is equal to the angle uh, EBA. Again, that's 15. And if we add these two angles, or if we add one of these angles to both of them simultaneously, we can see that the angle EAB plus the angle EBA must be double the angle EBA. So because these two angles are equal, uh, the sum of both is double one of them. All right, we've seen that before. We also know that the angle BEF is an exterior angle to this triangle, um, BAE. Right, so we have this, the side uh, AE being produced down to this point F. So that we can say that the angle BEF must also equal the angle EAB plus the angle EBA. That's the first part of proposition 132, that the exterior angle of any triangle is equal to the sum of the two interior and opposite angles. And so both double EAB and the angle BEF, both of these, uh, both of these things are equal to angle EAB plus the angle EBA. So common notion one tells us that we can say that they're equal. We can say that the angle BEF is equal to double the angle EAB. Excuse me. Now, if we look at this triangle um, EAC, uh, we can prove similarly that because these two sides are equal, uh, the angles which they subtend must also be equal by one five. And so the sum of the two together must be double of the one. 
But we also see that the angle um, CEF, being an exterior angle to the triangle EAC, must add up to the two interior and opposite angles. So the angle FEC is equal to the angle EAC plus the angle ECA. And so we can say that the angle FEC is also double uh, the angle EAC. It's the exact same thing we did for the previous triangle. And if we add these two together, so if we add BEF and FEC together, BEF plus FEC, well, that gives us the whole angle uh, BEC. And so BEC must then be equal to well, double of whatever the two angles are. So the two angles, so BEF is double the angle B uh, or EAB. And the angle FEC is double the angle uh, CEA. And so when we add these two angles together, what we're going to reach is double the sum of these two angles together, which is obviously just the angle BAC, so that we can say that the angle BEC is double the angle BAC. This is the first part of our proof done. Next, if we take this straight line, DE, like so, we produce it all the way down to G, like that. Uh, we can prove similarly that the angle GEC equals double the angle EDC. So looking at this triangle right here, DEC, we know that that angle is equal, and so the angle ECD uh, is equal to the angle EDC. And so ECD, and so the angle ECD plus the angle EDC it must equal uh, double the angle EDC. We also see that the angle GEC being an exterior angle to this whole triangle DEC uh, must also equal uh, the angle ECD plus the angle EDC. So we can say that the angle GEC equals double uh, the angle EDC, which is that. Uh, and again, by Prop 132, we can see that the angle GEB is equal to double the angle EDB. Let me just uh, try and figure this out real fast. Ah, there it is. Um, so we see in this triangle EBD that EB is equal to ED by definition 115. So the angles are st which they of 10 must be equal. So that means that the angle EBD is equal to the angle EDB which means that the angle EBD plus the angle EDB equals double um, the angle EDB. We also know by prop, uh, excuse me, by prop 132 again that this angle GEB being an exterior angle to this triangle BED is equal to the angle EBC plus the angle EDB, which means that the angle GEB is equal to double the angle uh, E, D, B, and if we actually subtract these two from each other, um, so if we take this angle G, E, C, and we subtract G, E, B from it, what we're then left with is the angle B, E, C, and if we take the angle uh, E, D, C, and we subtract from it the angle E, D, B, what we're left with is the remaining angle B, D, C, and so, uh, again, by property of magnitudes, we can say that the angle BEC is also double the angle BDC. This being the second part of what we prove, of what we set out to prove. And having proved the first part of what we set out to prove, we are done with the proposition, therefore, etc. QED. Uh, nothing to say about this proposition, so I shall move on to Proposition 321.